devil Adam. It's a song, it's a song, song fly. It's a song fly, baby, yeah. It's a song, it's a song, song fly. Who can I you live in that song fly? It's a song, it's a song, song fly. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our new podcast, Soft Life Through Christ. The only way to have a the soft life. The only way <laughs> to have a soft life. Yeah. I am Radija and I'm Renaya. Today we are here to tell you guys our testimony. We've been getting a lot of DMs, phone calls, just a lot of people wondering, are we okay? How are we doing? What are we up to? And it's been a lot of speculations about what has been going on with us, mm-hmm. but today is finally the day to share our testimony and tell you guys what it's what has been with us yes and god actually gave us this date to release everything that's why we were waiting because we want to acknowledge him and everything we do and just make sure it's right so yes we definitely have been praying and fasting Mm -hmm. for this moment and the time has come y'all the time has come we've been waiting around i'm like yo i'm ready i'm ready (laughs) because i feel like this is gonna help so many women i agree and that is the goal Mm -hmm. to just come back and get all the people that we deceived and yes. just let astray. So mm-hmm. we back. What it's all about <laughs> we back. So I just want to go ahead and briefly describe our spiritual background. Mm-hmm. So for me personally, I did grow up with a relationship with God, and I would go to church with my mom. She'll take us to church, of course. Um, even throughout high school, I maintained a relationship with God. I would take my friends to church, and we even formed like this whole church group where we were going to church and. Then the enemy came Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I fell off track and I would say around 2019, 2020, and I just started doing all the worldly things. I'm talking about like drinking, um, smoking hookah, partying, having sex outside of marriage and just doing all the things that was not pleasing to God. And now, ever since October 17, I will never forget the day, God has came back for me and yes, I'm now back under the blood of Jesus Christ. Yep. She's yeah. back. She's better. Yeah. And you look so beautiful. <laughs> you look yeah, so beautiful. Yeah, thank you. So do you. You can see him shining right through you, girl. And what about you? What was your spiritual background like? Well, for me, you know, growing up, like you said, mom would take us to church, but mm-hmm. I was never like super excited to go to church. Mm-hmm. I knew that God was real though. Didn't he say one time you fell asleep in church? I did. I did. <laughs> I did fall asleep and my aunt was tapping on my shoulder like, girl, you better wake up. Yes. <laughs> so as far as me, I didn't have the whole godly churchy girl experience yeah. relationship. But thankfully, he has came back Mm -hmm. and left at 99 to come get the one. But in our case, it was (laughs) four or five five of us. (laughs) So just thank God for salvation and deliverance. So So I want to go ahead and describe what is salvation and what is deliverance. Because we may Mm -hmm. have some young people who are watching this video and it's like, I have never heard of that. So, for those who are wondering, sorry to cut you off. No I've never, I've never heard of like that. Like prior to this, yeah, you never heard. I, I had, I was, I had no knowledge on any of this. Yes. Yeah, so. so I had heard about salvation, but I never heard about deliverance. Okay. Basically, with salvation, you are accepting what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Mm-hmm. So you're receiving the fact that He died for our sins. Deliverance, deliverance is basically you are casting out all the impure spirits out of you. Mm-hmm. So I had only went through a process of salvation, thinking that I had this ticket to heaven no matter what I did. I was under the impression that no matter what I did, as long as I had accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I was going to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's what I had in my mind. So I felt like that gave me a license to think that I still can go out and just sin repeatedly as long as I knew who Jesus Christ was. Yeah. And And you accepted him. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. Yes. So. So now that deliverance has came into place, I now feel like it's much easier to walk out this Mm -hmm. Christ-like life because those spirits no longer live inside of me. So now I can fully come into agreement with what God has planned for me, what he says to me, all these things. So I really appreciate deliverance because now the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. Mm -hmm. And And he's only going to guide you. He wants you clean, walking on the right path with Jesus. And And living a repentant life. Yeah, if you do sin, but it's not a ticket to sin. Yeah. 
with that being said now we're gonna tell our testimony so let's do it well i remember praying to god one night about a certain situation that i was in a person came to me with a proposal Mm -hmm. and it sounded good at the time i was just in a place where i didn't care They told me I was going to make a certain amount of money. So I'm like, cool, money, let's do it. I had just had my baby too. And it's like when you have a baby, this grind instinct just kicks in. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, let's do it. I got to get this money. Just make sure me and my baby is straight no matter what. So I accepted the proposal. A couple years, say about, I'll say about two years passed by. And it went good until it wasn't going good no more. Mm. the math was not mathing so I'm like you know what I got to get out of this I prayed my prayer I said God if this person asks me this question in the morning that means they're stealing or getting over on me and the morning comes I wake up I check my phone it's like seven in the morning and this person asks me the same exact question that I prayed to God about and I was just mind blown but I continued on with the situation. I just kept that in the back of my mind, though. I'm like, you know, I know this. God has revealed this to me. And things just kept going wrong. And I knew it was time to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So I went on a fast, a three-day fast. I didn't know how to fast at the time. I just used to always see you do it and mom do it. So I did it by faith. I'm like, God, I'm going to give you three days. I'm going to get off of social media because that was something that I would always be on at the time, just trying to keep up with the latest trends and stay on top of stuff in the business world. So I'm like, you know what, God, I'm going to sacrifice this because I enjoy doing it. And every time I felt the urge to go on social media, I would just go into prayer and pray to God. And the first day went good. The second day comes, I go out to breakfast. The people that I went out to breakfast with, they told me some news that I did not like. Mm -hmm. I was very uncomfortable. I was heartbroken. Mm -hmm. I'm driving home. I'm sweating. I'm like, (laughs) yo, not again. I get home. I had... My boyfriend living with me, I storm past him, I get in the shower. He comes to the shower and he's like, what's wrong with you? So I end up telling him, I'm like, yo, they telling me that you doing X, Y, and Z on me and you living with me, you get me? Mm -hmm. So whatever, we get into a tussle. A tussle. And this time, usually I will fight, like knock somebody in the head, but... I didn't do that this time. That's how I already know God was already with me. I was just over it. The person ended up leaving. I'm sitting on my bed and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to live like this anymore. I've been Mm. through a lot. I'm just tired. I just literally don't know where to start. But I will always remember my pastor's wife. She, She was always sweet to me and she would send me scriptures so I'm like, you know, I'm going to just hit her up. And I will always hit her up, too, once in a while whenever I would go through something. But I would never make my way to her house to pray with her or talk to her. So this particular day, I get in the car. I don't remember the drive to her house. Mm. But I make it there. That's how I know God was with me. And I sit down. I'm thinking, we just going to pray. She going to encourage me, tell me I'm beautiful. I don't deserve this. And I'm going to go home and find somebody else (laughs) so that just didn't go as planned god had other plans for me she looked at me and she said radija are you ready and i'm like yeah i'm ready i didn't even know what i was ready for so she's like are you ready to just give it all up and i'm like you know what i am i'm i'm ready to just give it up i'm not happy i'm depressed I just can't keep living like this. I want to be better. So I ended up writing on a piece of paper everyone that I felt had hurt me or I hurt them. I forgave myself. I forgave them. I repented of all the sins that I could think of at the time. And my pastor, his name is Mr. Jason, he lit the paper on fire Mm -hmm. and burnt it. 
And as that paper burned, it was on and it was popping. Right. Okay. I started to manifest. But this is the thing here, right? The first manifestation of the spirit was a deaf and dumb spirit. Mm. So with a deaf and dumb spirit, it will confuse you. It doesn't want you to understand what's going on in the present moment. So after I talked to my pastors later on and just was like, like, why was I in this trance not knowing what was going on at the time? And they ended up telling me, like, you know, it was a deaf and dumb spirit. So they had to cast the spirit out, which is, you know, you have no authority to be here in the name of Jesus. You mm-hmm. got to go. That was that. Boom. Jezebel manifest. So Jezebel was the hardest okay. spirit of my deliverance. And just for those who may be wondering what exactly is Jezebel and like what are some of her characteristics? Jezebel is very provocative, Mm -hmm. controlling. Very sexual. Very sexual, manipulative. She wants to be in control, the center of attention. Mm -hmm. And she preys on people that are prophetic. Right. You know? so she can be in men or women. Yeah, she can be in men or women. Because when you hear the name Jezebel, you think of a woman. But men can have it too. Men can have Jezebel as well. So that's some characteristics. So... If you see that, you know somebody's operating Jezebel, and mm-hmm. I had it real bad. Jezebel had a very strong hold on me, and during the deliverance, she just didn't want to let me go. She was mocking my pastor. My pastor would be like, let her go in the name of Jesus, and Jezebel would be like, let her go in the name of Jesus, like just mocking him, telling my pastor he had no power. She was feeling on herself, but this is the thing. It's my body, mm-hmm. and the spirit is... Op in operation, so it's the spirit talking as me. It's like the real me had moved to the back, and the mm. spirits would manifest, and they would talk as me, cursing in my pastor's house. If you know me, I am not disrespectful. Jezebel was in there cutting up. She was calling herself Jazzy, and I had my hair like this at the time. The bob was flipping back and forth, just doing the most. Very mm. embarrassing, just <laughs> embarrassing me. I, like I said, I didn't know what was going on at the time, but of course my pastors knew. So that was that. I got to my pastor's house about, I would say, 530. They're trying to catch Jezebel out for hours. It gets around 11 p.m.-ish, 12. And the Holy Spirit had told my pastor that I was in Jezebel's web, which was generational because it came from my mother. Mm-hmm. Luckily... My mother, she lived across the street from the pastors. And they had caught my mom and they said, hey, Tiffany, come over real quick. At the time, I wasn't talking to my mom. We had been through some things and we just wasn't on good terms. So I haven't talked to my mom in months. So she comes over and it's very awkward. And she's just looking and like, what's going on? And they're telling her, like, you know, you guys are operating in the spirit of Jezebel. Hmm. My mom was so defensive. She's like, Jez- who is Jezebel? Y'all, I'm not no Jezebel. So she ended up sitting down because she saw that we were serious and she seen what was going on. So she sits down and my pastor is telling her what to say to the spirit, with the spirit which was to let me go, let my daughter go because she had to break the web off of me. And Jezebel was like, no, I'm, I'm not letting her go. I love her. She had influenced me to do so much so she just felt like she owned me Mm -hmm. and I was who I was because of her so she just wasn't letting me go they kept trying to cast her out then something just hit me and I looked at my mom and I'm like mom where's my sister call my sister and she ended up calling Renaya at I would say like 3 a.m 3 a.m she called Renaya and I'm like you gotta go get her Renaya needs to be here so when I had received the phone call from my mother, prior to that, the night before, I was working all day long, mm-hmm. like really long hours. So I was tired. So when she had called me, she's like, hey, you need to come over to Miss Col- Miss Collette and Mr. Jason's house. Something is going on with Rhodesia. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay. So then I get up and then I thought about it. I'm like, yo, I'm so tired right now. So I, I was like, imagine. I call her back. I'm like... <laughs> Mm, can I come in the morning because I'm very tired? And she was like, no, you need to come right now. I'm on my way to come get you because my car was with my younger brother Mm -hmm. because he was down from college. So long and behold, she comes and 
I want to say she got there very quickly. Our house is very far apart from my mother's, and she got there in about like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And when she got inside the car, she just told me what was taking place. And when we got back over to that side of town, I go to her house because I'd use the restroom. So when I'm walking down the stairs to her house, I fall down the stairs. So already the spirits was like, uh-uh. Mm -mm. You ain't going over there. Yeah. <laughs> I had a bruise on my arm. It was just crazy. So I get over there. And mind you, at the time, Radija and I were not talking because I didn't agree with her decision to have the person living in our house. So, um, and then another thing, too, we had already had, like, a past incident happen with one of her ex-boyfriends where he came, well, he was living with us for a long time. And we had found that he had set up a camera in the bathroom using a little box with a hole in it. It was purposely recording me. So I had presented it to them, and I truly feel like they had a hard time believing it or it was, you know, the person was being manipulative to cause them to not believe me. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, um, we had to face each other. Like, we had to sit directly in front of each other and hash out our differences and say how I felt about you moving your boyfriend in and why you felt like it was a good idea to move your boyfriend in. And if you were we able to see, speak, too, like, yeah. yeah. And we could speak a little on that, <laughs> yeah. too. When we first originally came together to move together, because this was our first time living together, and I thought yeah. it would be a good idea, because, you know, just we to young. connect the ones there. <laughs> we young, we get money, we bosses. Yeah. We found the perfect condo to live in, really nice upscale. So, it was supposed to be a bachelorette. <laughs> house we called it the batch pad yeah and it was just supposed to be only girls like no guys allowed here only girls be turning up we having fun we living our best lives i started wait to get... no girls allowed my friends will come over <laughs> what i gotta do anything okay like <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> guys that were not dating like we having fun okay so that was the plan that was the agreement we were going to live our best lives together but your girl started getting a little lonely. I'm like, I miss my bae. I love him. And just at the time, his <laughs> lease was up. So I'm like, you know what, baby? Come over here. And honestly, I had got tired of two because I was handling everything on my own. Mm -hmm. I was paying a high amount of bills, like a ridiculous amount of bills a month on my own. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm tired of this. See, but the problem was, yes. You did not make me stop paying rent. No, nah, you I said not. I'm gonna take her rent. Wait. I'm gonna take his rent. Jezebel, <laughs> that was Jezebel, honey. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stack this money. It just wasn't good. She was robbing me. Jezebel was robbing you, girl. So I'm like, you Jezebel know, Jezebel was robbing me. Yeah. So I'm like, come here. But I ended up playing myself because he. And that's what I told you too the night before. I said, Radisha, when you try to play people, you play yourself. And she was like. Mm. My girl, my man coming. Like, my, my, man, my man, my man, my man, he coming over. And he's going to pay these bills and I'm going to have a good old time. I'm going to stack my money in the meantime. Right. Whatever. That just, <laughs> it came to bite me back in the butt. So another thing I had to face was my mom. I had to stand, I mean, well, sit directly in front of her too and tell her how growing up I felt like there was a lot of favoritism that took place mm -hmm. for either for the older children or just for the younger children as well. Like it was never about me mm -hmm. and I'm the middle child. So we kind of experienced those things quite often. Mm -hmm. And even down to like our first cars, she had bought everybody a first car. But when it came down to me, you know, she had went through a hard time, so she wasn't able to buy my first car. So mm -hmm. I always felt some type of way. Like, I always felt like I had to work harder than everybody else, but still fall short, you know? Yeah. So I had to deal with that. I had to forgive her for that and just let her know how I feel. And I also got to see her perspective is that she was not intentionally trying to do that. So it was just a hard time yeah. that we went through. Yeah. So happened. Every time it came to me, <laughs> yeah. it was a hard time. Just middle child. Yeah, like, just middle child. I don't child's, know what it is about know. the middle child. It's just, y'all yeah, always. We're special. We're special. You guys are so special. Thank you. So you should feel good about that. Yeah. God loves me. That's all that <laughs> he matters. He loves you. So, yeah. So that was some things that we had to work on. And then, um, d -line. You know what makes me laugh? You said when you got there, I was like. You were tossing like this. Like, I was seeing you on the couch going, like, rolling over. Like, your spirit, when it seen me, it was like, uh, 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 uh. And like, it wanted you to come. Well, I, I think why. the real Radija wanted you to come and be there with me. But the me. spirit didn't want me to the come. The spirit did not want my brothers and sisters yeah. there. But the soft heart Radija that loves her little sister was like, call my yes. sister, mom. 
So you end up coming and then you see me like this. Mind mm-hmm. you, I st- I'm still like in a trance. Yeah. Because it's not only Jezebel there, it's other spirits there as well. It was like the victim spirit. I had the pity spirit. I had a spirit of depression, mm-hmm. a spirit of suicide. And what gets me is that I will wake up every day, right? Go about my day thinking I'm having a good day or sometimes I'll have a bad day. But I never once thought I'm living with spirits inside of me. Right. And I was honestly being tormented because it was one time I was in the shower, right? Mm -hmm. And I was feeling so suicidal. I was just so depressed. And I had everything, literally everything, just all the things you could think of. But I was just still not happy. I'm like, I don't feel like I have purpose. And I've been through some things and people would talk about me. That would just always bring me down. So I'm like, you know what? I'm depressed. I am suicidal. Mm -hmm. I don't and we was in therapy, I, I too. Wanna, we did go to therapy. We was in therapy. We had the same therapist. And that I just funny. truly felt like therapists taught me how to calm the demons. Yep. <laughs> it just said, tame let's, them let's things for the weekend. The demons, and that's just that. Yeah, so. so. Just, I'm not against therapy. Oh, yeah. But for my sake, it just calmed the demons down. It never got them out. But the deliverance definitely yeah. got It taught you how to just go through life. like With the demons. Yeah. <laughs> with them back. <laughs> unclean, nasty spirits inside of you. Yeah. So I just remember being suicidal and that ties into this. I had heard a voice, which was a spirit one day on a day that I was suicidal. And it was telling me, gather your brothers and sisters and y'all go to Haiti. I didn't understand at the time, but during the deliverance, when they continue to cast it out, the demons, things were would come up and the Holy Spirit will reveal it. And it happened to be voodoo on us. Mm hmm. A particular person in our family had done voodoo on Renaya, my mom, my other brother, DeAndre, my brother, Zimon. But I guess it didn't go as planned because when you play around stuff like that, it never truly go as planned. Mm -hmm. Ended up getting that cast off me and just more spirits started to manifest. And the Holy Spirit had revealed another thing about voodoo that was on me. This particular girl, she had gave us something to eat one day. My baby ate it. I ate it. And another person ate it as well. And this voodoo was to cause confusion with within us. And the, le- the Holy Spirit was showing them that the girl was jealous of me. And they gave them a vision that she was trying to rip my face off. Mm-hmm. That's how Almost much, had to, like, ruin you. Yeah, she tried to ruin me. Like, she thought I was pretty, and she wanted to be in my place. She wanted to beat me. So she was just trying to get me up out of there. Mm-hmm. And just thankfully that this whole thing came to pass because I got that cast off myself, my baby, and the other person, and I interceded on their behalf. So now it's probably about the morning time. And it, so, was, it was. So now we're it going on. So like 8, it was 8 a.m. Yeah, now. Yeah, so this is consecutive hours trying to cast out the demons. Nonstop. And now it's time for the morning. So I would say like mm-hmm. 8, 9 a.m. And I originally had planned to go to breakfast with my younger brother. Mm-hmm. So I, I called him. I'm like, hey, you know, instead of meeting me at my house, you could just meet me at mom's house. So I didn't tell him what was going on. So he pulls up and then I tell him what's going on. But I'm still hoping we could probably go to breakfast. I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell him what's going on, but we're going to breakfast still. So then as soon as we got to pull off, my mom come running outside and was like, Demon, you have to come inside. It's very serious. Radish is swelling out. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man. So we all go inside. And now Demon gets to witness it for himself that it is indeed true. Because we know, like, you don't be acting. And we know that you don't know anything about a Jezebel or anything Not at like all, baby. that. I'd rather be home in my bed. Right. <laughs> so he got to see it for himself as well. Yeah. And that broke my heart, too. Yes. Because just to see my brothers and sisters looking at me and just they it was like my brother was so fearful like he tried to hold it together but I could see in his eyes that he was like what is going on with my sister what's what's going on like yeah when is is my sister going to be okay is she going to come back right so that was very hurtful but I was still operating in the spirit Mm -hmm. when he got there yes so then my younger brother was able to call my older brother and get him to come over there and at first he was like, uh, is she all right? Like, just slap her. Like, come on, man. She tripping. Just slap her in he the people's house. Like, just wilding out. Like, did she take a bad drug or something? Tried Which, it. We don't know why he would even say anything like that. Because I have not 
the no drugs. Right. Smoke the little hookah. Drink the little drink. Dr- drugs is just so far fetched. <laughs> like he know me from doing <laughs> cocaine or taking pills. He tried it. He, he really did. tried it. He did. But he didn't know what was going on. He wasn't there yet. Yeah. And he's like naturally like a jokester. So he told y'all to slap me. <laughs> yeah. My younger brother was able to convince him to go ahead and come there. And he came pretty quickly. For Drake, Which is all God. You see how God. Quickly. Oh, yeah. Well. He came quickly. Okay. <laughs> he could have came five hours. He yeah, came like one he hour. Came. That was God, though. <laughs> yeah. God knew that y'all all had to be there. Mm-hmm. It was almost like y'all had to be set free mm-hmm. for me to be free. Right. That's how God like was Like a working. domino effect. Yeah, it was a domino so effect. So God was like, I'm coming for all y'all. He came for all of us. He knew yes. what we needed. So Dre arrives, mm-hmm. and he's storm up in the little house, his little cell. <laughs> he's storm up in the house, and they're telling him what's going on. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, no, nah, this y'all <laughs> conscious, man. <laughs> and I was so fearful. Well, my spirits were so fearful because I remember telling my pastor's wife, I'm like, he's the strongest one. Whatever voodoo or anything that's going on, excuse me, <coughs> It's something in my throat for real. <laughs> I'm like, wh- whatever spiritual is going on here, I just know his spirits <laughs> are the strongest spirit, okay? And I'm scared. I took my pastor's wife outside. I s- <laughs> he has a gun on him. And he came to Not kill us. Snitching. The spirits were snitching. I didn't even know what was going on. The spirits were snitching. It was like, he has a gun and he has came to kill us. The spirit was trying to cause a lot of confusion. Uh-huh. She's like, nah, that ain't happening. This is the house of the Lord. So we go back in. And my brother is like, like we said, he's like, not believing it, not going for it. He's like, this y'all conscious. Y'all better get it together mm-hmm. and get up out of these people's house acting a fool. <laughs> he like, since this roof, tell yeah. me so y'all don't know. <laughs> oh. The Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit did. Yeah, which was very beautiful about my deliverance Mm -hmm. was that this how you know God wanted me so bad. He wanted me to come back to him so bad that he was allowing the Holy Spirit to come upon me, right? And tell my brother something that nobody (laughs) knew about him so he could believe. So the Holy Mm -hmm. Spirit literally came and told me what my brother needed to hear. Mm -hmm. And I told him and he flipped out. Mm. He was looking like, what is this? He said, nobody knew that. Nobody, nobody knew that. that <laughs> he was trying to walk out the door, all that, but he came, He ended up coming back, and he seen what was going on was real, and that demons was getting cast out of me. Mm. So we took a little break with me because them demons was not <laughs> letting up, and my mom ended up going into her deliverance because mm-hmm. now she's seeing that this is nothing to be played with. So she's like, God, I surrender to you and I'm giving my life to you today. So they started deliverance with her. And she started manifesting. The spirit of anger had her balling her fists up and she's on so the little. ground. Like, being very aggressive. Her face even turned into, like, red bumps. Like, someone with clear skin, face turned into huge red bumps. She had like, veins. Huge yes. veins pop. My mom is so beautiful, too. She mm-hmm. had these huge veins popping out of her face. She just did not look like herself. Mm-hmm. She's falling on the floor, just like... The exorcist, literally, like, yeah. the exorcist, like, her body's just shaking, and she's telling my pastor's wife, she's saying, don't let me die. So, mind you, I'm still in this trance. Mine is gone. The spirits is just in operation with me. But I'm looking at my mom, and I'm like, hold up. Y'all not going to let her die right. <laughs> I was so scared. I was like, y'all not going to let my mom die. She ended up fully getting delivered and set free, but it was just very traumatizing to watch. Mm-hmm. And... I just remember as well, I was sitting on the couch and I was hissing because I had a serpent spirit in me. Right. So the serpent spirit was looking at everything going on too. And it was like, like hissing at y'all. Y'all remember? Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah. It was hissing. So it was just like. It was wild. It it was very wild. Mm -hmm. And then too, with deliverance, it's like the way the evil spirits can come out is different for everyone. So Mm -hmm. someone may burp, someone may fart, someone may spit. Um, someone may yawn, poop. Um, what was some of the other ones? Throw up. You could throw, throw up. up. So it Cry. can it can really look different for everyone. Yeah. So, so it hurts. It was more of like a spitting situation. And she was yeah. screaming because of the anger. Yes. Because spirits could come out like that as well when you mm. scream. It was just very a very traumatizing situation. But yes. I'm so thankful that we went through that because we are totally set free. But we weren't set free in this moment. Right. This deliverance. 
I have to go back a little, guys. This deliverance took three days. My deliverance was three days. And, of course, because you guys were coming to in to get delivered, too. But I truly didn't get set free until the third day. Mm -hmm. And, like I said, God was already in operation with me because he had told me to tell my pastor three days. I looked and I said, what happens on the third day in the Bible? And they're like, um... Jesus had re resurrected on mm -hmm. the third day. I said, yeah, it's, this is going to take three days for mm -hmm. me. So God was already letting them know, like, on the third day she will be free, but these these unclean spirits have to go. All right. Thank God for endurance. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody really got a good night's rest in those three days, barely showered, barely, barely brushed their teeth, barely ate. That's why I'm so thankful for our pastors as well, because I feel like some churches, you would go there for deliverance and they'll do it in the hour and they'll be like, oh, Sunday service over. Mm -hmm. But some people are not truly set free. Yeah, you got to be very careful with who you go to to seek deliverance. Yeah, but thankfully, in our case, our pastors, this is what they do. They have been Full called time. by God to do this and they take it very serious. So if they wasn't going to get no sleep that night, just to make sure that we were set free, they ain't get no sleep. Yeah, that's just what, what it was going to be. So on the second day, too, I went through a process of deliverance, but my deliverance didn't finish. So some of the things that were getting cast out of me was like spirit of rejection, um, spirit of unforgiveness from a past relationship, as mm -hmm. well as I had to repent for like my tattoo. I got it done here in Miami, but I got it redone in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So... You know, New Orleans is Boodle City. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was what was, was revealed to like um, just uh, you kept saying, I don't like that tattoo. Like there's something with that tattoo. I was hissing and, at the tattoo. Like, yeah, it was definitely tattoo. because it was done in New Orleans. Yeah. And Boodle City. And I remember even after getting a tattoo, like two, three weeks later, it still felt like I was on the chair getting the tattoo done. That's how much pain I was in. Like I could still feel the needle going through my skin. Mm. So it's very serious. So I didn't finish getting delivered. Oh, also, too, I had the spirit of infirmity. And what mm, the spirit of yeah. infirmity was trying to do to me was basically, like, my womb was so tight as they was casting the spirits out. Mm -hmm. Like, my stomach was rock hard. And basically, it was going to make me barren, not be able to have children. Mm -hmm. So I had to repent as well for having abortions in the past, um, which is bloodshed, innocent bloodshed. Yeah, innocent bloodshed, me as well. Yes. And the thing with the innocent bloodshed is that the... Dark side, they will use that to come into covenant yeah. with the devil. So I had to repent. The devil hates when you repent. Mm -hmm. He hates it yeah. so much. He hates when you forgive. He hates when you repent. Mm -hmm. He did not like that at all. Especially with unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. I really had to call on to God to really help, to help me you. forgive some of these people. Because I couldn't do it within my own will. Like yeah. I couldn't do it on my own. I needed God to literally give me the strength to forgive these people. Yeah, thank God so, for that. Yeah. And your thank heart God. had to be postured in the yes. right in the right place. You yeah. cannot go through full deliverance if you still feel like you're going to be unforgiving. Mm -hmm. You just can't do it. Your heart has to be posture right. Yes, and your deliverance won't be complete until your yeah. heart is posture right. And then also, too, before I even went through my process of deliverance, before they asked me if I, that was something I wanted to do, I was thinking about the things I would have to give up. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, I had a whole Halloween yacht party plan in the deposit mm -hmm. already paid for. <laughs> I had front row tickets to the Raw Wave concert. We all Ooh. know what type of, you know, spirits can come in through Raw Wave music. Even my shoes that I had on, you was like, like basically the Holy Spirit was revealing to you that I needed to take off the shoes because it was purchased from an ex-boyfriend. So mm -hmm. I just had to get rid of all that stuff and just be willing to sacrifice everything. And that's just so amazing how God was giving me the sermon and mm -hmm. allowing the Holy Spirit to work because I wasn't even fully delivered yet. It was just so wonderful that he would even do that because he knew that this is things that had to be said yes. for the deliverance to continue on and be, for you guys to be fully set free for me he was even telling me to say certain stuff so my it was like clues from my pastors yeah to be like oh okay this is that so we gonna cast this out it was mm -hmm. just so much and so beautiful my younger brother he will come on and speak on his deliverance yes. too but he had got set free in that moment as well mm -hmm. on the second day and my older brother too he's still a work in progress yes. but we did free him from a lot of things on that day as well so that was making me feel at ease because i truly believe in my deliverance that you guys all had to be set free first. And the spirit that was operating me was trying to trick me. Like I was a sacrifice, right? Mm. 
it was saying that you guys were all going to be delivered and I was going to die. So basically I was a sacrifice for you all, you guys to all be set free. It was just trying to cause this confusion in my head. Right. So I think that's what prolonged my deliverance as well, because I was so scared. I'm like, once I get delivered, I'm dying. I'm going to, I'm going to heaven. But I thought it was kind of beautiful because I'm like, I'm going to be with God. But it was literally telling me that I was going to die. Mm. And that really scared me. At this point now, it's been about 24 plus hours of us dealing with the deliverance. And it's nighttime of the second day. And we're hungry. We're tired at this point. So we decided to go across the street to my mom's house thinking that maybe we could get some rest, get some food, shower up, freshen up everything. So we go walk across the street, but Radisha stays so that she can continue her deliverance process. Um, because we didn't know if you could sleep with this going on or anything so i didn't even want to sleep I yeah was like, mm -mm. so we go across the street to my mom's house we're about to order food my mom go upstairs with lala to take a shower freshen up and there's a little knock at the door <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so radija comes knocking at the door but I don't prior even, to you getting to the door i don't even know how they let me out the house <laughs> like why did they let me out the house knowing them spirits was tripping i don't know but they came across the street with her so they yeah. supervised her but the, the thing street. is i walked across that street with no shoes on <laughs> Literally <laughs> out of my mind. I promise. I don't remember having on shoes. Uh -huh. I had on no shoes, girl. Walked across that street. Big old pants. Because at the time, I had on like some boyfriend jeans. They uh -huh. were like a size 14 <laughs> from Zara. That's what I went to my pastor's house in. Uh -huh. A hoodie and some big boyfriend jeans. But at this time, the, the jeans had done stretch even bigger than what they were. At the, <laughs> what I bought them as. So I'm walking across the street. No shoes. Big pants. Pants scrubbing the ground. Mm -hmm. knock at the door boom 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 <laughs> and but prior to you getting to the door what happened my mom i was already having discernment god was already giving me discernment it's mm -hmm. really wild it blows my mind i keep saying this mm -hmm. and i just started to see things i was still in the trance but i was seeing things that weren't right mm -hmm. and my mom had this halloween pumpkin scary face thing on her door and i ripped that thing <laughs> down <laughs> off the door i threw it in the floor i walked up in the house and the house was so stink mm. but my mom's house is so clean she was burning the cinnamon toast or yeah the candle from bath and Body champagne Works. toast she was uh -huh. burning the champagne toast candle mm -hmm. but the house was so stink and that was a form of discernment as well god would give you that form of discernment, like you could smell when something isn't right. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this at the time, but this this was going on. God was helping us through this deliverance. And I'm storming up the stairs. I'm like, y'all got to get out this house. My mom was in the shower, just trying to take a little shower, freshen up. I said, get out the shower and let's go. Everybody out this house. So everybody's already thinking I'm a little cuckoo mm -hmm. because of everything that's going on. So they still don't know if I'm really truly laced or if this is just, god or you know at the time so they're listening to me though everybody y'all putting on y'all stuff y'all packing y'all bags everybody's out the door running out the door yeah running because i was very serious and as we're running out the door my mom had her window shades open and i looked in her house and it was literally like her house was on fire but it wasn't on fire i was seeing it as it was a fire burning in her room. And I'm like, mom. Spiritually. Yeah, spiritually. I'm like, mom, your house is on fire. Like, look in the window. Somebody is in your house, which was a spirit, I'm assuming. I didn't understand at the time, like I said. Was doing something in her house. It was burning the house. But the house literally wasn't on fire. But I could see that. So we go back across the street <laughs> to our pastor's house. I know they were so tired of us. Thank God for them. We all go back to the pastor's house. And everybody's just like, what the heck is going on? Now we're already scared because we didn't understand the whole deliverance thing. It was kind of getting real to us, but that scared us so bad. Yeah. After I found out that we couldn't stay at our house, I'm like, now we have nowhere to go. Our mm -hmm. pastors, of course, would have let us stay there. Mm -hmm. But at this point, we done definitely overstayed our welcome. We done been there for 24 plus hours. It was just a crazy situation. So... I booked us a hotel. I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to find us a little hotel for us to stay at that night. Mm -hmm. So I booked the hotel. And because we had to be very specific about who booked the hotel, 
based on what type of occupation you had. Yeah, because we was not playing with God. Yeah, we was point. like, listen, we not playing. If you got any dirty money, <laughs> we can't use it. Yes. So we so was very you specific about who was allowed to book the hotel. So I booked the hotel. We don't go back into my mom's house. Mm-mm, that is scared. done for. We leave and then we stop at Walgreens because we like, okay, let's get some snacks. Let's get some underwear. Let's get something. We mm-hmm. need something to go to the hotel with. I needed to get hair wash. Yes. Because I had did a reading. Mm-hmm. This is so important too. I had did a read. I did two readings actually, but the first one it was useless. Didn't get much information, so I'm like, let me go to another reader. I just want to know. And this reader, she was telling me to meditate, and she was telling me to wash my hair with goat milk and coconut milk and all this stuff she told mm-hmm. me to buy i bought it i'm thinking like okay i'm gonna get more in tune with myself and i i've seen people do it too so i'm like okay maybe this is the new way to like connect with yourself and spiritually so my little crazy behind at the time done listen to this lady advice and i sat in my living room i washed my hair with this potion and i was meditating And as I was meditating, I felt some type of power, fake power that came up on me. It was like definitely spirits coming inside of me because I was an open portal. Uh Didn't understand at the time. So I did this and that came up during the deliverance as well. So as we leave to go to Walgreens, I'm like, I got to get some shampoo. I got to wash my my hair clean. I got to wash myself clean. And you also wanted some olive oil because, as you know, olive oil is used for anointing people as long as you pray over it so we go inside the store me and my lo- little brother we leave her we leave her inside the, the car because she wilding in the car so mm-hmm. we like we're gonna leave her in the car so demon and i we get out at walgreens so we find some stuff we find like some toothbrush all this stuff and then we go get the oil but she was very specific about this oil she wanted like virgin olive oil so i go to the hair section and i'm like okay we're just gonna get some olive oil like for the hair but as you know, those olive oils usually have other things mixed in with mm-hmm. it, but she was not having it. So I, I was get like, the olive it gotta oil. gotta be pure. <laughs> yes. so like I, Jesus. <laughs> yes. So I get the hair olive oil that had all the other stuff mixed in it. We get like some underwear, we get some toothbrushes, some soap, all this stuff. So we go to the shampoo aisle. We're trying to find this girl, this pure shampoo. Never even heard of pure shampoo a day in my life, but they have it. So we get her, like, we're trying to get her this pure shampoo. We go get her water. We're like, okay, we got to get pure water. Mm-hmm. As we're about to check out, my brother was like, oh, I'll just pay. And I'm like, no, trust me. I'm going to pay. Just mm-hmm. let me use my money. I'm going to pay. And then another thing, too, I had dropped one of the water, one of the pure water bottles. I dropped it on the floor by accident, and I, like, scanned it. But I didn't do it intentionally. I dropped it on the floor. So we get in the car. And mind you, when we were checking out, I said, let me just pay because she, when I get in the car, she's going to ask me who paid. I just know she's going to ask me who paid. Because God was already using yeah, me at Yeah, he was this like, point. listen, he was only already gave me the sermon. Money. Yeah, he was already giving me the sermon. So I'm like, because that was helping us get through the deliverance. Yeah. The things that he was telling me to say. So they was already mind blown. They were scared. They was like, Radisha go know yeah. that we did this because God was already revealing it to me, even though I was still fighting spiritually with the unclean spirits. Right, so we get in the car, and the first thing, she didn't even turn back to look at us. She said, who paid? I'm in the front seat, y'all. And <laughs> we scared of the spirits that's operated in her at the yeah. time, so we like, I paid. And then I told, I said, Dima, I told you she was going to ask us. They so was then, mind blown. So we, I hand her a water bottle. One of the four water bottles I picked, like I grabbed at the store, I hand her the water bottle. So happened, it is the water bottle that fell on the floor. She's like, uh-uh. <laughs> something wrong with this water bottle i'm like how do you even know this exactly it was no way you could have known because the way checkout was it wasn't in front of the window where you look mm-hmm. at it nothing. was all god so i'm like yo this at this point i'm like listen i just can't do this anymore mm-hmm. like y'all was just out we of was it. Oh, we was tired it was just a lot so we leave walgreens mm-hmm we're driving, and an evil spirit was telling me to go to my grandmother's grave. And I was so scared. So I'm like, you know what, y'all? I don't think this the sermon is working no more. I'm going to let y'all handle it. I told my younger brother, I said, you're going to pick where we sleep tonight. And an evil spirit was talking to him as well. And it told him that we were going to go sleep in front of our childhood home, mm. which is what we call 1260. When we grew up at 1260, 
it was a happy place. We ended up moving from 1260. My mom still owned the house. So we moved to a bigger, nicer house. And then my mom had experienced hard times. So we ended up moving back to 1260. And it just wasn't a good place for us, the last moments there, because my mom was struggling so bad. I don't know why the spirit would tell him to make us sleep out there. Mind you, the house is occupied. It, it would look so weird if we go sleep in front of a house that somebody's living in now. Right. So thankfully, my mom stepped in. She's like, you know what? We're not going to sleep at No 1260. We're going to the hotel. So we ended up pulling up to the hotel, getting ready to go in and check in. And I look at the hotel, and the hotel doesn't have a balcony. Like, you could tell that you can't open the windows. So I'm like, hold up. We not staying here either because I cannot cast the spirits out of me at night. Something came up on me like I'm thinking I'm going to be casting my own demons out. Mm -hmm. It was just a lot of confusion going on. So I'm like, Mom, we can't stay here tonight because we can't open the window and let these spirits get out of me in the middle of the night. So they're just going with whatever I say because at the time everybody's scared of me. And we just thought it was right in the moment because God was revealing some stuff through me. When we got to the hotel, I'm just like, wait, so we not going to stay here after I just booked it. So mm -hmm. now we have to completely leave the hotel. Mm -hmm. And now we're heading towards Broward. Cause my mom was like, she's going to find the hotel. So Radish was like, just drive and we'll figure it out as we go. Cause we don't want to book anything in advance. We get mm -hmm. there. There's no balcony, no window. So now we're like, we're going to drive to a hotel. And then once we get there, we'll know if it's fit. Mm -hmm. Mind you at this point, it's like 11, 12 o'clock at night. So now my mom, she's trying to find another hotel for us to stay in. And she found this hotel so far out, which was God working because we had to drive up to Broward. And on the drive, we drove past the casino. Now the casino used to be my stumping grounds, the Hard Rock Casino. I used to go there early in the day. I would go there sometimes like 10 a.m. and just get my free drink and gamble with my friend and my boyfriend at the time and we just thought it was so fun but of course gambling is not of God so that's something that I had to get free from as well but I didn't know until we passed the hard rock and I just felt like a heavy presence on my hand and when I was manifesting back at the house it was like that yeah and the my pastors were saying like get up off her hands like casting them out let go of her hands so as we're driving by, I'm doing it to myself by faith. At this point, I want to be free so bad. I'm like, I'm doing this by faith, God. And I honestly did feel relief doing it. I put my arms out the window driving past the hard rock. And I was like, get off of me, telling the spirits, get off of me, all this stuff. And we just kept driving. We're heading towards Bar, And it was a place that I used to go for beauty service and... We passed this place, and I'm getting hot. I'm getting heavy again. I just start slapping myself again. I tell my mom, pull over. I'm slapping my hands. I'm slapping my hands. I'm like, any spirits connected to such and such, you got to leave me. You are not my mother. I do not belong to you. Just cast any spirits down. I was even talking in a different voice at this point. That's how we were able to understand when it was God telling the Holy Spirit to you know, reveal this to us. We get to the hotel now. How can you describe this hotel? With this hotel, it resembled a lot of the Marine Kingdom spirits. So it mm -hmm. had this huge water tank in it. When we checked into the room, it Octopus. was mermaids. And that was another spirit that I was dealing with was a Marine Kingdom spirit that had to be cast out. And with that spirit, it was more so like, I was trying to, not me knowingly, trying to mimic a mermaid. I would get the BBL. I had got two BBL. I had got one BBL and two lipos because I wanted my body to be, my waist to be so small and my hips to come out. Like a mermaid. A, like I was, yeah, it was influencing me to make my body like a mermaid. And it was just so wild because saying that, I, I got the... BBL and then I got the two lipos and I remember that I wanted to get um, another BBL. It was so wild. I, don't, I didn't even need it. I'm just like I was so obsessing over the perfect body shape. I'm like I'm getting a new BBL for Christmas. It was literally influencing me to 
do these things. And it influenced other women as well. When you see women that are just trying to, you know, have the super tiny waist with the big butt, the big hips, that's a reflection of the Marine Kingdom and operation. Right. So when we got the, to the hotel, it was... Yeah, so we checked into the hotel. We're chilling. Um, you can tell she's uncomfortable with the hotel, but she's just trying to, like, persevere because we're exhausted at this point. Like, we would, probably was riding around for, like, an additional two hours trying mm-hmm. to find the perfect hotel because it just seemed like it was always something with a hotel. So we're exhausted, and I just know that she just was trying to, you know, wave her uncomfortableness mm-hmm. so that we can get some rest. So you washed your hair out from the goat milk ritual, um, like a resemble of washing her out from the goat milk ritual. And I took a shower. I, you know, lay down. So it's me and, is it mom and Lala in the bed? And you and Demon. My brother was really trying to be by my side. He was yes. trying to show so hard that he wasn't scared. Because I'm like, I'm not laying in the bed her. Yeah, they did not want to lay in the bed I'm, with me. I was like, listen. We could sleep in the same hotel, but I'm not sleeping in the same bed with her because she was wilding already. I'm like, I'm not mm-hmm. laying next to, <laughs> to the spirit. So in the middle of the night, you wake me up out of my sleep. Mm-hmm. And you're like, you got to get up. I have to sleep next to mom. Yeah. I'm like, oh, Rasija, come on, bro. Yes. So I get in the bed with D-Mom. You get in the bed with mom. Mm-hmm. And throughout the night, I just keep like waking and up, waking and up because I'm not comfortable, and I just will wake up and you're just staring at me like, hmm. yeah. <laughs> it was the discernment. Like you're like you just look so white, and she was looking very pale. You was like something looks wrong. And then later on, when we get back to the house the next day, it did reveal itself that some a spirit was still mm-hmm. in operation in you, but yeah. she literally looked like a vampire, like death. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't put my finger on it because I don't know none of this stuff. I don't know none of these spirits. I didn't know. Like, I was seeing throughout the deliverance about some of this stuff, but I just still couldn't put my finger on it because I'm like, I don't know still what's going on. But to see her like that, I'm like, no. So you ended up going back. You drunk a little water. You went back to sleep. I go to sleep as well. And then I wake up and my mom is looking at me. I think she was like praying to God, like trying to, you know, tell God, like, free my daughter. Like, just trying to, everybody's trying to understand this, but she was praying for me. And I jump up. I'm like, nah, we got to go. Like, my mom, looking at my mom just sparked something in me. I'm like, no, we have to go and get out of this hotel. Something isn't right here either. So we leave the hotel and we drive back down to Myanmar. Mind you, we leave the hotel, like, we probably was there from 12 to, like, 2. 2. Don't pay for another hotel because we couldn't get the money back from the first hotel. Yes. Just Mind you, this her, is her money because I'm telling them none of y'all can use y'all money. And if y'all know me in real life, I'm very cheap. Yeah. So I'm very. like, Lord <laughs> Jesus, this is your mission. So I'm just going to do it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So we head back to Marymar at 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And we stopped. At this point, ain't no, ain't no more getting no more hotels. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. So mm-hmm. we just like, whatever, we going to thug it out. So we, we head back to Miramar. And we go to Walmart. We stop at Walmart. So get, we could get like some blankets. Because uh-huh. we like, listen, we sleeping in the car at this point. Yeah. So, because we only had a few more hours left. So we buy some blankets from Walmart. We go back to my mom's house. But it's a little plaza in front of her house. So she parked the car there. Because we didn't want to go back to the house. The <laughs> house was on fire in the spiritual room. We... Parked in, at the plaza, which was right in front of our house, and we slept there. Very, very humble experience. And, mm-hmm. you know, we when we woke up, that was one of the things we talked about, of just, like, how humbling, like, this experience brought us to, like, to, the fact that we're sleeping in the car. And, mm-hmm. of course, we know that there was no need for us to sleep in the car, except the spiritual room it was the only reason that we needed to sleep in a car. And yeah. it just was a humbling experience. We never had that, like, we never had to do that before, so, yeah. And we honestly didn't have to because my pastors, they did open their house up to us. But it was just like, let's let them get a little rest. Mm -hmm. Even though they didn't care to rest, it was just like, it felt like it was the right thing to do. And it was coming into the three-day mark anyways. And God said that I will be delivered on the third day. We just all try to get rest. We slept for what, what would you say? Because I slept good. 
I'm not even going to cap. I slept good in that car. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, how's she going to sleep this good when she traumatized? That was, <laughs> that was the spirits. Those spirits wasn't done. They was like, we finna get this rest because in the morning we back at it. Wake up. My pastors, they were already up. It's to the point they barely got any sleep. They text my mom like, are you guys okay? Where did you guys end up sleeping at? Where did you guys go? And my mom texts them and she's like, you know, we end up just sleeping in the car because we couldn't find a comfortable enough hotel. And when I say that broke my pastor's heart, he was like, nah, y'all could have just stayed here for the night. Like we thought y'all was literally just going to go to the hotel. So they're up at like 5 a.m. waiting for us to come back to their house and finish helping me get delivered. We arrived back to the house bright and early in the morning. And I remember walking into my pastor's house. But at this point, I had washed my hair. So the hair is a little uneven. When I wash my hair, it's straight in the front and it's curly in the back. Mm -hmm. So I walked up in the house with the new blanket <laughs> that they had bought me. I had the blanket over my head, but my hair was so out of place and I just looked like a crazy person. Literally, like I belonged in the psych ward. So I walked in the house and everybody's up ready to cast the, the demons out of me. But I'm like, yo, I need some rest. Even though I got rest, I'm like, I need a little more rest. So my pastor's like, just go upstairs. This is how loving they are. He's like, go upstairs and just finish off your nap, take a nap, finish off your sleep. So I went upstairs, and I remember when I went to go get sleep, I couldn't even sleep because the room that he allowed me to sleep in, it was red, and it was reminding me of blood. So that blood brought me back to me dying because, remember, the spirit was telling me that I was going to die for y'all to get delivered. So I'm laying in the bed, and I'm going back and forth for God because I'm like, you know, you brought me this far for me to just die. Like, that's not fair that everybody gets delivered, and I just die. So I'm like, you know what, Jesus? I had the blanket over me and I did it by faith I'm like this is you wrapping me up in your arms I just remember praying too before I went to sleep I'm like if, if it's your will just you know let it be and when I woke up I went back downstairs and y'all were downstairs mm -hmm. and just ready again to finish casting the demons out of me but it had came about that you still had spirits operating in you basically it had came up that voodoo was placed on me and another altar another was altar up was set up you. and what made me realize it was that like my pastors and them they have this playpen with dolls in it and i was like it's something with dolls um because growing up i was so obsessed with dolls like i had tens of dolls mm -hmm. and if you guys know voodoo dolls all that this specific person who had placed voodoo on me basically placed it because something was in my name since I was younger. I don't know why this specific thing was in my name. And they basically put voodoo so that when that thing gets sold or something ever happened to the person who originally owned it, it'll go to me. So that person put voodoo on me so that I can have favor on them when it sells. And I can remember being younger, this person will always promise me things. And just specifically me, it would be promised. And once again, I don't even know why my name was even put on this specific thing. So this person would promise me things and just be very like bribey. Um, so yeah, voodoo was placed in that area. So we had to break that covenant and denounce that covenant. Also, another voodoo covenant was placed over me. So now we had three, three voodoo covenants mm -hmm. placed over me. Um, the third one was from someone very close to me and basically it had came in through a drink. My pastor had asked me, she was like, was there ever a drink that someone had, has given you? And I can remember this specific person giving me a drink and they were forcing me to drink it. Like I was in the shower and they kept forcing me to drink it. And I thought it was weird that they kept offering it to me. And then I get out the shower and they forced me to finish drinking it. And it was around mm -hmm. COVID time too. So I assumed that it was related to something with COVID. Like, oh, just drink this, you know, like such and such made COVID. it. Yeah. We were so gullible. So <laughs> very horrible. gullible. And you would not just think that people would oh, do no, but... anything to you. There was a covenant came through that yeah, drink. Whoever but... made the drink, whoever gave me the drink, it was a covenant placed into yeah. that. So. Which yeah. is wild that, Very wild. like I said before, that people are really doing these things mm -hmm. and 
it's just so hurtful knowing that this is what's going on. Yeah. And you just being the loving person that you are, you just like, okay, cool. Like not, yeah, not like, thinking that somebody drink. will harm you. And at the time too, the drink was very sweet. I can remember the drink being very sweet, so I didn't think anything of it. But normally when you think COVID drinks, you'll think of gingery or yeah. citrusy. I remember it being sweet, almost like cinnamon Yeah. So, yeah. Just too much. Yeah, a lot of voodoo. So you so, just got to be careful what you eat and drink from be people. Be very mindful. Be very mindful. And if you just even feel like, nah, something ain't right, most of the time it just ain't right. Yeah. But it just still wasn't over, guys. <laughs> it still wasn't over. After all of this, and, mm-hmm. you know, this all came at a shock to us because we did not know these things were taking no. place. So it's like, But it was it definitely was so God much. showing that he was real. Yeah. So that was, it was time. It was the encounter that we needed yeah. to change our lives. Now, after she is fully set free by the grace of God, it's back to me. My pastor looks at me. And is talking to the spirits, of course, and was like, we ain't done with you. It's because the spirits was chilling, watching her deliverance and everything. We we forget about you. So it's back to me now. And this is going to go on to into the third day. So it's about, I would say, noon now. And another spirit that manifested was a kundalini spirit. And with this spirit, this spirit is a false Holy Spirit. It's mm-hmm. a it's a false prophet. Tries to mimic the Holy Spirit, but in a false way. And how can it come in through you? It can come in through readings, yoga, meditation. That was one spirit that ended up manifesting, and it was wilding out. It was trying to my pastors. They had communion on the table. The spirit was trying to take the communion to get drunk in the spirit, which the kundalini spirit likes to do to act drunk in the spirit and laugh and just all this foolishness. And it was being deceiving as well. This particular spirit, which I truly believe came in through the psychic readings. And I also went to go see a voodoo guy, which we call the woo man to joke about it. Um, it's called a woo, a woo man. So I had went to go see him. I had wanted to know something about a situation that I went through because someone had taken something from me. And I just wanted to know because I felt like it was somebody close to me that had done it. And I just wanted to remove the person from my life. I didn't want to harm them or anything, but I just wanted to really know who had done this to me. Because only somebody close to me would have known to do this. Mm -hmm. And how everything just went, was planned out. It was just, it had to be somebody close to me. And I just really wanted to know. And nobody really knew at the time to come to where I was at, the the place I was at to just do whatever. So I'm like, yeah, this somebody close to me. I want to remove them from my life and just be done with it. I didn't want to harm them. So I didn't go to the voodoo guy to, you know, kill or do anything evil and I wasn't truly knowledgeable about things that happen and that you can kill people and just do all these evil things sacrifice all stuff none of that I just wanted to know so I went to him I brought five hundred dollars in the voodoo guy he's basically swindled me whatever you call it he took the money because he didn't have no information for me either he's just like call me back Come back here in five days. And he was pressuring me to put protection over myself through him, telling me if I let him do a spell, he was going to protect me. And he told me to bring back my baby. He's like, bring your baby back. I'm going to protect him too. I'm like, nah, son ain't right. But before I left, he did tell me to pray in there. And me just being gullible, not knowledgeable, I ended up praying there and I'm just praying for like, you know, everything to go right in my life and for me to know who did what they did and just all of the above. So left there, but I did feel very weird when I left there because deep down I knew that it was wrong to go see a witch doctor or a voodoo mm-hmm. man. I knew it was wrong in my heart. But when I left there, I definitely feel like I left with some spirits because I was laughing so hard. The voodoo guy's house was very dark, like pitch black. 
when I walked outside, the, sh- the sun was shining so bright. So I feel like the spirits that imparted in me in there was trying to make me feel like I did the right thing. So I was smiling so so hard when I walked out the door, but it was like a uncontrollable, which makes me think about the Kundalini spirit because it it laughs, it's drunken spirit. And that's exactly how I was acting when I left the voodoo man. I was laughing so hard, like literally like drunk, but I was thinking like, I'm so happy. It just had me feeling Mm -hmm. like I did the right thing. And a blood sacrifice took place as well. Oh yeah. It was a rooster. And I promise y'all, I did not know what was going on? And I thought it was normal because I would hear stories about the, the voodoo guy and I, I would think like, oh, whatever, this is kind of funny. Stupid. Not a good idea. So it was a rooster at the the guy. When I walked in, I could hear the rooster, right? And it was doing a caca, whatever the roosters do. <laughs> but when I started saying my prayer, my eyes was flickering. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they couldn't stay open. It was like literally like a camera flashing. But I don't remember seeing him leave my side. But I didn't hear the rooster anymore. It blew my mind, I promise. <laughs> I did not hear that rooster anymore. So I'm assuming... I don't know how the rooster died. He was literally pouring Casamigos on his face. He had a bottle of Casamigos and he put pepper, hot peppers, chili peppers, whatever, in the Casamigo bottle, he was pouring it on his face and just doing all this voodoo stuff just to tell me who did something to me. I should have known mm-hmm. that this wasn't right, but I did feel deep down that it wasn't right when I left. Right. So that had to be broken off of me, and I truly believe that's where the Kundalini spirit came in. So with this Kundalini spirit, it wasn't letting up either. It was giving Jezebel as well, didn't want to leave, to a point in the deliverance where... The spirit had faked like I was set free. It was telling my pastors, like, I'm free. Who the sun says free is free indeed. The spirit was saying, I'm walking with Jesus now. But it was talking as me. It was it was my voice. And my pastor, she's just talking to God and she's looking at me and she's like, "Mm -mm, something ain't right. And my mom was crying at this moment because she thought I was set free. The, yeah, we thought it was over. We thought it was the finale, the grand yeah, finale. Yeah, because the, the spirit was putting on a good show, like mm-hmm. literally like I was set free. I was not set free. And even myself and my body, I felt so sad because I'm like, wow. Because it's almost like the spirit had me confused. Mm-hmm. I thought I was set free because it was like I was in this trance. Like, I'm set free. Who the sun set free is free indeed. I was quoting Bible scriptures too. And this is the thing about me. I have never read the Bible. I have never read past let there be light in the Bible. Like, not even to joke, front. I just could never get past the first page in the Bible. The Kundalini spirit was tripping out. It was not me. Finally, they, they took a step back, back to the deliverance, and got the Kundalini spirit to leave. So now when the Kundalini spirit left, it was back Jezebel. She was still there. So she goes back to cutting up and it's still daytime at this point. So the spirit is talking as me and telling my pastor, let me go sit outside. I want to sit outside. So I go sit outside because at this point, my pastor, she doesn't know that I truly don't even like to be outside. I'm not an outdoors girl. So I'm sitting on her back porch, just like how I'm sitting now, just very jazzy and stuff. So um, they come back there and they get my mom. She walks to the back of the my pastor's house and she's like, Radisha don't even like to sit outside. Radisha don't like the sun. So the spirit gets so angry, so, so angry. And then they brought me back in the house. (laughs) So finally, they're talking to Jezebel again and casting her out. And she finally gets tired. And I just remember before Jezebel left, the whole time throughout the deliverance, she thought I was so beautiful and I was that girl and she loved me so much. Before she left, she looked at you guys and she told Miss Collette, she said, Rhodesia is so ugly. And my pastor, she got so happy. She said, how does she look? And Jezebel said, she looks like Jesus. And she left. That was the last of Jezebel. It was so wild. 
So, so Jasbel no longer liked you now that you. Yeah, I was trying to were, get my life yes. to Christ. She mm-hmm. she seen what was going on. Of course, these spirits been knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know what was going on. Right. So finally, she seen that they weren't let, letting up, and she left. Another thing that I remember from Jezebel is she said that she made me. She was trying to tell the pastors to let me go home and clean my closet out. <laughs> she was like, let let Radija go home. And she was talking like this, not even talking as me, like, let me go home. Let Radija go home and go clean her closet out. She wanted me to throw all the things that I had gained over the years operating under her away. Mm-hmm. Like, Let her go home. She has to go home, saying that's the only reason that she will set me free if I go home and throw everything that I owned away. Like, I had to get rid of all my nice things because under her influence, I had got it. And now it's winding down. The the third day is winding down, which is when I'm about to get set free. But the spirits didn't even know the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was so exhausted at this point because... Now the deliverance is hitting 72 hours. Even though I got that little bit of nap, I probably slept for like a good, uh, I would say seven And majority of the time you were total. standing up. Yeah, I had to stand for up For the deliverance. Because you got to tire the spirits out. Mm-hmm. So they, my pastors, they had me standing on my feet the whole time. And I was just really uncomfortable. But I just had to like make the spirits uncomfortable as well. They're still casting out spirits. I'm burping. They just naming all these spirits. Just so many spirits. And we'll we'll talk more about the spirits in another video too. Like Yeah, like we'll, a full breakdown. Yeah, we'll write it down and just break all of them down. Because there's just so many to name. So as the, the third day is winding down, uh, another spirit came about and it was leviathan Mm -hmm. and that's a very strong prideful spirit so that was the last spirit that had to come out and this spirit was not coming out it was it was putting up a fight just like jazabel did Mm -hmm. so at this point my body is tired you guys had to hold my arms up Mm -hmm. for the rest of the deliverance and i was going off on them i'm like just let me go let me die as well like i'm you're assaulting i'm tired of this i was calling them ugly just going off i'm like i don't want to do this anymore and i'm just tired like it like i'm finna die anyway so be it i'm like whining and and just so over it i'm like i can't do this no more i'm tired of it i don't even care about getting delivered no more i was falling on the floor my brother i love him so much he was picking me back up off the floor and was telling me stand up and they were literally telling me to fight for my life and I'm like, I don't want to do this no more. I, I just don't care. So I looked over at my pastor, and she was just getting so discouraged. But I knew she wasn't going to give up on me. And, but I could see the discouraged look in her face. So I'm like, you know what? She's telling me, like, Rhodesia, I had to go through X, Y, and Z. And her story was very hard. It was worse than mine. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fight. She was like, fight for your new life. I'm like, I'm going to fight for my new life. The spirits just did not want to let me go. They was trying to take my mind, just everything. It was so much torment that I was going through in the in these last moments because they knew their time was up. I just didn't know their time was up. So I was being tormented so bad. So after I looked at her, I just felt like I put these people through so much these three days. I'm going to fight. Mm-hmm. So even the spirits were getting defeated. Oh like, yeah, she was talking directly to the spirit, and she was like, "You lost another battle. Yeah, like just give bad. up. You got to go back home and say how you lost another battle. Like, yeah, your commander is not going to be happy with you. And they you, were leaving once again. They lost started another leaving. battle. I just remember at the end, I was fighting so hard. It was so much torment. It was just to even think about it just yeah. hurt hurts because I was. I was in so much torment at this last moment because yeah, it was it, intense. It was like literally like boom, boom. I was fighting and I was praying to God. I'm like, God, please just come and help me in this moment here because I don't want to do this anymore. I don't even care to live. I, I just can't keep keep going through this. So it's getting to like 1159, mm-hmm. 1158 ish. And I remember. As I was praying to God, I threw my arms up, like, I surrender, and I have given my life to Jesus Christ. The spirits hate that. When you say the name of Jesus, it holds so much weight. 
They was done with me. <laughs> they was done with me. So I turned to the wall and my pastor, she has like a white blank wall in her house. Because now it's about your heart. Yeah, my heart was postured. It, yeah, now it was, it's definitely about your heart. It was postured to the point, Jesus, just please help me through this. And when I say I won't ever go back to my old life, and that's exactly why it had to be as rough as it was for, I feel like, every one of us, because it's no way that we were going back to our old lives after that. Yeah. So I threw my hands up. I'm like, Lord, I surrender. I would never do these things again i'm just tired and i fully give my life to you and i'm gonna pick up my cross and i'm gonna walk with you and i'm looking at a white blank wall and when i say i seen jesus i seen jesus on a cross with his arms up just like this on the day that they nailed him to the cross Mm -hmm. that's what it was looking like to me on that wall just like this and i had my arms up just like this and i'm just staring at the wall And I literally see Jesus on the cross. And my pastor, she started speaking in tongues. Oh, I feel chills. (laughs) She started speaking in tongues. And she said, the verdict is not guilty. Mm. I'm about to cry. Don't make me cry. She said, the verdict was not guilty. And I was set free Mm. in that moment. You're going to make me cry. Just knowing... That God literally came back and he got me and he got us. He got us. Like, I don't even care about this makeup ass. <laughs> he came back. He came back for us. And he literally showed me. I'm like literally shaking. <laughs> he showed me how real he was. And that I would never turn back around. I would never go go back to my old life ever. So therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So that that's just that's our deliverance story. Yes. Very intense. Wow. Very remarkable. Very life changing deliverance story. And we're just super grateful and honored to be back under the blood of Jesus. Now our covenant is with Jesus. If Anyone has ever been wondering if God is real, he is definitely real, y'all. We know that we know that we know. Like, nobody could tell us he's not real. Nobody could tell us anything because we experienced it for ourselves. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. So now we're just here to tell our story and do his work. God will line things up you'll go through certain things where you'll know that it's your time to come like he's calling you even watching this video could be a sign that god is calling you yep i feel like that's gonna be for a lot of people too you'll feel it but when i say that it's like god is gonna set things up so when it's your time to come to him you're gonna come to him ready Yes, desperate for desperate him. so for, that you will never look that back you will never look life. back. That's how that's how God wants you. He wants you when you're desperate so he can fill you up with his love. Mm-hmm. Amen. To that, sister. That's that's when he <laughs> wants you. And that's I feel like that was truly my case. Those are definitely happy tears. It was just like, wow, just even reliving that moment, I feel like was a lot. It was a lot, but I'm just so grateful and thankful for God's mercy, his glory, just everything. And just knowing that he didn't forget about me and he came back and he came back to get me and he came back to get my family as well. So it just keep you in a place of humility. I'm still blown away. I'm I'm literally still blown away. And this was months ago. Man, God is so good. And I just pray that everyone just gets to experience his love because that's what it's all about. Literally nothing in life can fulfill you. And I said this to somebody too that they, I'm always just preaching. I promise I'm always just preaching somebody. Nothing will truly be able to fulfill you but God's love. Not money, not a partner, not a business, not even a child. Just seek him and he'll reveal himself and he'll lead you to where 
you should be to get the deliverance. Even if you got to watch videos, if that's going to connect you to sermons, anything. Right. And we definitely will be praying for you all. Praying that God gives you guys a personal encounter Mm -hmm. so that you guys can never, ever, ever feel like there is a need to go back or feel like God is not real. This encounter, we pray, will be so personal to you Mm -hmm. that you will be able to know and testify to his goodness. Give God the glory and honor that he deserves. It's all for him, I promise. Zero percent us. This is all him, y'all. We've been praying all day. We will come on and tell you guys our after deliverance story. Mm Because if you thought the deliverance story was good, just imagine life after the deliverance. It has truly been something. Mm -hmm. God has called us out of our business. There has been so many things and people We've we lost have had a to whole give bunch up. Of people. Family, friends. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it all was worth it because now we are intimate with Jesus. So that's yes. all that matters. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on all social platforms at Soft Life TC. We pray that you all get to experience God's love. Until next time, love you guys.